Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. We're going to connect the dots because I believe I'm going to show you how XRP is about to hit the whole world. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Man, do I love to smell a crypto in the morning. Let's get going. $1.22 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. The market is off by 0.1%. In the last 24, Bitcoin now back under 30,000, 29,400 plus. Ethereum, 1850 and change. Tether market cap is 83.5 billion plus. We still don't know how the U.S. government really feels about it. However... Number five spot is XRP. We're 63 cents. We are up 0.7% in the last 24. We're off by 3.9 on the seven day. Good morning, everybody. It's link to link2.com, ladies and gentlemen. Explore, analyze, and invest. You got to be accredited. But I tell you, if you're not, join the Digital Perspectives Mastermind Group and hip up your financial literacy and learn how to be around the people you want to be around so you can achieve the goals you're looking to achieve and then get accredited. I tell you, there's a lot of accredited people in the hundreds and hundreds of people that make up that group. You wouldn't believe what's going on in there. But if you are accredited, you want to get inside link2.com and start buying this private equity it is the best private equity in the world there's no joke about that axiom space going to be the first commercial space station how about that one i might get my xrp moon shot and then i might go get on the axiom space commercial uh space station how cool would that be be the first xrp holder in space <laughs> that would be awesome circle then Cerebrus, I trust capital. Ripple, as we know, always a favorite. Top seller, PolySign, Chain Analysis, Snap Logic. Glint is on the board, baby. Link to itself, uphold the list, goes on and on. Do not mess around. It is the best private equity offering. And you can't get it at a better deal than you're going to find it on Link2. Link underneath the video. Major crypto exchange, Gemini, list XRP, ladies and gentlemen. And that is in all. We see right here, XRP temporarily surged to $50 on Gemini. I have got to start setting some sell orders. What in the world am I doing? I'm sitting here watching all this stuff. This is what that little spike looked like right here. Yeah. I just want to know if somebody out there was able to catch it. You know, that's all, you know, I just, I, even if it's not me, I'd, I'd be so happy if somebody like, yeah, I got a thousand of them out of there. That would have been great. I, I just would love to know if somebody actually made out on that in any way, shape or form. Meanwhile, oh boy, the SEC, this is Paul Grewal, chief legal officer for Coinbase says, I never understood the logic that seeking advice to comply with the law is proof of an intent to break the law. Sometimes, maybe most times, it's actually the opposite. He's absolutely right. This is so on target here. The SEC regulation by enforcement from Goldman Gary Gensler encourages companies with good faith intentions to leave the country or, at the very least, evade guidance to come in and see us BS that he keeps spewing. Because they know it's more likely... They will be sued for wanting to be transparent and compliant because that's exactly what happened to Ripple. <laughs> but I want to start taking apart what's going on here. Because the court case against Ripple and XRP, the digital asset, I believe was a weapon. I think John Deaton had that right from jump. But I also believe it is now serving as a vetting and auditing, auditing process because ultimately the technology does what it says it can do and they have the partnerships and are continuing to build the partnerships and relationships built on the fact that the use case utility works. It does what it says it can do. Now I want to play this clip right here to show you the difference between Bitcoin and XRP. This is Eric Van Miltenberg from Ripple himself. Take a look at this quick clip here. So a fair question is great. Well, you know, you just said you can move the value across the blockchain. Why not use Bitcoin? There's more of it. It's it's kind of the you know the 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 standard, if you will, in terms of market cap and everything else. 
I'm a fan of, of Bitcoin. I think that the, um, you know, uh, the store of value and what it, it, it does serves a great purpose. But when you think about Bitcoin versus XRP for a specific use case, the one that we're engaged with, and that's settling um, real payments, Ooh, we're a little biased, but we think that uh, XRP stands out really well. Um, we use a different way to validate transactions. Some of you follow the space at all, knows that, know that Bitcoin um, leverages something called proof of work, where there's miners around the world that use tons and tons of compute power to solve a, a mathematical puzzle that ultimately validates the transaction. Um, as a result, you see on the left-hand side, there's some ramifications of that. Uh, to settle a transaction actually takes a long time. This used to be hours. When Bitcoin was surging, it was days. And it's down to 45 minutes. It still goes up and down. I forget if this was last month, but it's relatively recent. I won't read down the list, but in terms of, of transactions, uh, a number of transactions, so throughput, the amount of energy required, um, it, it, the Bitcoin makes sense, but if you're trying to serve that high volume, low value payments use case, it really isn't the asset to use. It just doesn't line up um, to enable you know, the right end user experience and the right economics, and therefore, you know, XRP was developed by the, the same folks that founded Ripple. It, it was actually developed in it, you know, before Ripple was founded. But they had, they had been early on in the Bitcoin space and they saw some of the things that were deficient about um, Bitcoin, the scaling challenges, the, the, the energy consumption. And so they devised a different validation mechanism called consensus that, um, results in sort of the, the, the metrics you see on the right-hand side that we think line up much better for the payments use case. And it does. And Eric Miltenberg is being extremely polite, I believe, here. The reminder is settling payments isn't just about remittance. It's about all the money. And again, all the money is a reference to all the pairings of money all the different pairing possibilities of tokenized things of value, right? Oil to gold, gold to diamonds, right? You know what I mean? Derivatives tokenized to dollars. It could be any combination. That's what all the money means, right? It is a much bigger scope than just remittance payments. That's where it started because there was a lower height bar to get past the regulation to prove to the world and the companies using it that it works. And it does. And you know what? I think we're going to see strong evidence here that we're about to see how XRP is going to hit the whole world here. This is from Citibank. Now, I'm only going to play a couple uh, spots or one spot of this clip here. Let me set it up. It's almost where we need it. One second here. Right here. Take a listen to this. Citibank offers a solution that connects with third party banks. You hearing this? Not interbank system connecting with third-party banks that are included in the infrastructure through different technologies and innovation, multi-chain, multi-bank technologies. Once the solution is implemented, Citi will obtain periodically information on the balances of your accounts at third-party banks that have been included in the structure through different technologies, depending on the market. Then a comparison will be made with the parameters established by your company. With the result of this comparison, Citi will generate the appropriate debit or payment instructions to the other banks. This way, the funds will automatically transfer to your Citi account in an efficient manner. Now, how are they doing that? How are they doing that? Well, maybe this is how. Citibank extends partnership with Ripple-powered Valente's Volpay. Maybe that's how they're doing it. Are we speculating? Yeah, we are. But how thin is that limb we're actually walking on? I don't think it's very thin. Now we're going to see even more evidence because I believe there is about to be significant adoption as well as the gentleman in this video clip is about to say to you as well. This is Fed now, early adopters on the benefit of instant payments. Now, obviously, as 801 rightfully says here, there's no mention of XRP nor Ripple for all of those that are like, unless it says it, you know, I can't see it. Well, don't see it then. Just don't see it. Get the hell out of here. You know, <laughs> it's a, I don't understand those people. 
And whatever world they're living in, I don't want to be a part of it. I could tell you that right now. Take a listen to this clip. When services being offered by the Federal Reserve, one of the most trusted financial institutions in the U.S., we believe there's going to be a significant amount of adoption. This is just the beginning. In the months and years ahead, we look Listen. forward to this nation's banks and credit unions moving forward with this innovative new service. Looking forward to banks and credit unions moving forward this innovative service. <laughs> that is the gentleman from the Fed now. Interestingly enough, you remember when we covered this from back in 2020? This is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is an enforcement agency in the financial world, right? And this is what they said on page 39. With respect to covered third parties, insured institutions and their trade associations have told the Bureau that if Banks and credit unions, just like Ken said from Fed Now, send remittance transfers using serial method where sending institutions do not have correspondent relationship with all the financial institutions and remittance transfers and transmittal route. They cannot control or even know what transaction fees another financial institution in the payment chain imposes without having a correspondent relationship with the financial institution. As such, they rely on temporary exception with the respect to discretion closure of third party fees. Well, Ken just told us they don't have to do that anymore. So now we're wondering, will it be because they're using SWIFT's GPI, global payment innovation, or will it be because the continued growth of non-bank remittance transfer providers such as Ripple, right here, such as Ripple, can help to solve that problem using their virtual currency XRP. I believe we are about to witness, along with Ripple and the Visa connection, you see it right here. We know all the players, right? Or American Express and Ripple and the deep relationship they've had for years now. What are we about to see? How about this image right here? Brought to you by ISA, ISSA. 75% of distributed ledger technology projects in 2023 is delivering as planned. Take a look. I mean, you tell me what's going on here. It shows this, R3, IBM, Ripple. That's all. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all. Just IBM, R3, and Ripple. You know, uh, this is so exciting to me that I believe we are on the precipice of seeing this technology really get put to work and not too long from now, right here in the United States as well as the rest of the world where it's already underway. And here's a moment that needed to be said, and it's been said by the one and only John Deaton. It's been said by myself and many others since the ruling from Judge Torres, but here's Jeremy Hogan saying it as well, and it comes out very nice. You're going to like the way this is... This is laid down. Shout out to Jeremy. Digital asset commodity because the trial judge said so. Now it's in dicta, but she said digital asset commodity because the trial judge said so. Now it's in dicta, sure. but she said so. She, she made a very good order. So this is the only digital asset that I'm aware of that has that clarity moving forward. All right, period, done. Mm. Now, 
moving forward into appeal, if Ripple were to lose on the programmatic sales and individual sales, if, and I'm not saying they will, but if they do, the only effect that has is as to Ripple. So it only affects whether Ripple could sell XRP in certain ways moving forward. So, you know, I've seen a lot of confusion in that. And, and that, I think, is what the bottom line is. The problem, the problem you would have if Ripple lost on appeal is that the exchanges would have to be able to distinguish, uh, you know, XRP that's sourced from uh, from a, from a market maker or something versus XRP that's sourced directly from Ripple. And if they can do that, it's not a big deal for them. And so you're not going to see any delistings of XRP. But that really, the appeal will only affect Ripple, and it doesn't affect XRP, the digital asset. Hogan, I love when you talk dirty. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Intuitive from Trumers and his show. And shout out to Jeremy Hogan. Look, not financial advice or me or anyone else. XRP is about to hit the whole world. That's where we are today. I'll catch all of you on the next one.